majestic, mesmerizing, magnificent. He was a 12-time NHL All-Star, 6-time Art Ross Trophy winner, and 3-time Hart Trophy recipient. He was a proven winner, capturing the Stanley Cup 5 times, the Conn Smythe Trophy twice, and an Olympic gold medal. A player who was in a class of his own, capable of changing the outcome of any game and making plays that only he could make. The savior of the Pittsburgh Penguins organization, not once, not twice, but on three separate occasions. Standing 6 foot 4, 235 pounds, he's Super Mario, Le Magnifique, the Magnificent One, number 66, Mario Lemieux. Mario Lemieux was born on October 5, 1965 in Montreal, Quebec. Dad was an engineer and construction worker and mom was a homemaker, and Lemieux started playing hockey with his two older brothers at the age of three. Initially, he used wooden spoons and bottle caps, but it wasn't long before Dad had transformed the front lawn into a hockey rink. When it got dark, the brothers practiced inside as Dad had covered the living room carpet with snow and ice. Dad's dedication and love for the game of hockey was an inspiration, and this was the environment young Mario needed as he began his road to magnificence. Fast forward to the age of 15. Lemieux was drafted by Laval of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League and would go on to break records as he registered 646 points in 226 games in the following three seasons. In his third and final season for Laval, Lemieux had registered 130 goals that year, heading into the 70th and final game of the season, and he needed three goals to reach Guy Lafleur's goal-scoring record. Lemieux ended the night with six goals and six assists. This spectacular feat, coupled with his 29 goals and 52 points in only 14 playoff games, had propelled him to the top of every NHL scout's projected draft list. In the 1984 NHL entry draft, Mario Lemieux was picked first overall by the Pittsburgh Penguins. Even though Lemieux had announced he would play for any team who drafted him, he refused to don the Penguins jersey when he got on stage as he was unhappy with the organization with their reluctance to offer him an acceptable contract. The Penguins were perennial cellar dwellers at the time, so they wanted to, no, they needed to, add a player who could excite their fan base and bring people to fill the stadium. Thus, they agreed to Lemieux's demands, and the rest was history. The Pittsburgh Penguins had declared bankruptcy only a decade prior and had been reduced to a half-filled stadium on any given home game. It was a dark time for the organization, and Lemieux's arrival in 1984 instantly galvanized the team and captured the imagination of its fan base. And this marked the first time Lemieux had rescued the franchise. Heading into his first NHL game, the hype was real and everyone knew he was going to be an impact player, but not even his most loyal fans could have guessed what happened next. Just minutes into the game, Lemieux stripped five-time Norris Trophy winner Ray Bork of the puck and scored his first career goal on his first shift with his first shot. Super Mario had arrived. He was humongous, able to protect the puck from opponents. He was shifty, maneuvering his way past the D with ease, and he had lightning quick hands as the opposition simply couldn't keep up with him. Lemieux's reach allowed him to do things other players couldn't, and his strength was best exemplified while he was charging at the net, dragging his opponents with him not unlike a human jet ski. He had a lethal shot, picking corners with regularity, but most importantly, his hockey IQ was years ahead of his time. Lemieux was able to do this even in the playoffs when the competition was at its fiercest. He went on to score 100 points in his rookie season, winning him the Calder Trophy as the Rookie of the Year. Lemieux continued his point production for the next few seasons, but it was the 1987 Canada Cup in which he had the tournament of a lifetime. Playing with hockey greats Wayne Gretzky, Marc Messier, and Paul Coffey to name a few, Lemieux got a taste of greatness for the very first time. His 11 goals in 9 games is the very definition of dominant, and his game-winning goal against the Soviet Union with a minute and a half left in the game remains an iconic goal in Canadian hockey history. Lemieux had gotten the taste of success, and like a drug, he wanted more. He would go on to score 168 points in the 87-88 season, winning him the Art Ross Trophy as the scoring leader, becoming the first player not named Gretzky to win the award for the first time in seven seasons. 
Lemieux also won the Hart Trophy that year as the league's most valuable player. During the following 88-89 season, Lemieux registered an unbelievable 199 points including 85 goals, leading the Pittsburgh Penguins back into the playoffs for the first time in seven years. It was during this season in which Lemieux had his most famous game of his career. Playing the New Jersey Devils on New Year's Eve, Lemieux became the first and only player in NHL history to score five goals in a game in five different situations, at even strength, on the power play, short-handed, on a penalty shot, and into an empty net. Lemieux continued to dominate the league, but a back injury had morphed into a herniated disc, and it required back surgery that left him out of action for the majority of the 1990-91 season. But despite severe lingering back pain, Lemieux returned for Pittsburgh's Cup run that year, as he carried the team once more. His goal in Game 2 of the 1991 Stanley Cup Finals against the North Stars continues to be one of his most famous goals of his career as the Penguins went on to win its first Stanley Cup in franchise history. Lemieux's 16 goals and 44 points in 23 playoff games earned him the Conn Smythe Trophy as the most valuable player in the playoffs. In the following 91-92 season, Lemieux registered 131 points in 64 games as he won the Art Ross Trophy as the scoring leader. In the playoffs against the New York Rangers, he suffered a vicious slash that broke his hand and somehow managed to only miss five games to come back to lead the Penguins to a second straight Stanley Cup. His 16 goals and 34 points in the playoffs earned him a second straight Conn Smythe Trophy as the playoff MVP. The following 92-93 season started with a bang as Lemieux looked to win a third straight Stanley Cup. He set a franchise record scoring in 12 straight games to start the season and he was on pace to challenge Gretzky's untouchable records of 92 goals and 215 points in a single season. But on that fateful day on January 12, 1993, Lemieux shocked the world with a grim announcement. The 27-year-old had been diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma, a cancer found in white blood cells. It was painful, it required radiation treatment, and it often drained his energy, leaving him bedridden. Lemieux was away from the ice for two months, and while he was gone, the Penguins floundered. His return sparked a 17-game winning streak, an NHL record that stands to this day, and the Penguins finished the season with a franchise record 119 points. It's interesting to note that Lemieux's return saw him make up a 12-point deficit behind Buffalo's Pat LaFontaine for the scoring lead, and Lemieux ended the season 12 points ahead of him. The next few seasons saw Lemieux miss significant games due to his ongoing battle with Hodgkin's lymphoma. He was reduced to 22 games in the 93-94 season, and he outright missed the entirety of the 94-95 season. Lemieux returned for two more seasons which saw him reach several personal milestones. He scored his 600th goal in just 719 games. He registered his 10th career 100-point season, and in a game against the Montreal Canadiens, he put his childhood team to the sword with four goals in the third period tying an NHL record. Lemieux has had a magnificent career, but he just couldn't stay healthy. Whether it was chronic back pain, cancer, tendinitis or problems with his hip flexor muscle, it all added up and he retired after the 96-97 season at the age of 31. The Penguins had been chasing a cup since the early 90s and as they were spending more and more extravagantly, their debt continued to pile up and they were forced to ultimately declare bankruptcy in 1998. The situation was dire and it appeared as if the franchise would be relocated out of Pittsburgh. It was in the 11th hour when things were at its most dramatic and Super Mario was here to save the day again. He had a plan to purchase the franchise. His only wish? To keep the team in Pittsburgh. Lemieux had been a hero for the Penguins on so many occasions on the ice, it was fitting for him to also become one off of it. This marked the second time Lemieux had saved the franchise. At the turn of the century, Lemieux's health had gotten better and he was eyeing a return to hockey, and on December 27, 2000, he made his much anticipated return with a memorable goal, proving that it wasn't he who missed hockey, hockey had missed him. 
As the Penguins continued to run into financial trouble, they had to trade away their most expensive players, including superstar team captain Yaramir Yager. As a result, the team took a nosedive in the standings. But if we've learned something from Mario Lemieux and the Pittsburgh Penguins so far, every time they've reached rock bottom, there's nowhere left to go but up. And in the 2005 NHL entry draft, they selected a certain kid from Cole Harbor, Nova Scotia that turned their fortunes once and for all. Sidney Crosby had potential for days, but he was still a rookie in a league that would eat you alive if you were not properly prepared. And it was Super Mario to the rescue again. Lemieux took Crosby under his wing, taught him how to be humble, taught him how to be a superstar, taught him how to be magnificent. And it's this class and demeanor that has impacted Sidney Crosby and the Pittsburgh Penguins even to this day. As Crosby eventually passes the torch to the next generation of players, Lemieux's presence and his values will live on. And this marks the third time he saved the franchise. In 2006, Lemieux retired for a second time, this time permanently. He ended his career with plenty of records, and it's scary to think where he'd be on the all-time list if he remained healthy throughout his career. In 2007, he stopped a potential move that would have relocated the Penguins to Kansas City. I guess he saved the franchise four times. Lemieux was simply built differently. His number 66 has been retired by the Pittsburgh Penguins, Team Canada, and the Laval Titans. Furthermore, with his leadership, the Penguins have won the Stanley Cup an additional three times, bringing his total to five, fitting for a hockey god that is Mario Lemieux. It is said that generational players like Alex Ovechkin and Sidney Crosby can turn people into Capitals and Penguins fans, but Mario? He turned people into hockey fans. He had an aura about him that demanded respect from people. It's not common that a rival player gets a standing ovation in the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia, and Lemieux got just that on his final game before his first retirement. His loyalty is also commendable, as he's given everything an athlete could hope to give to a franchise. His contributions in the 2002 Winter Olympics in Salt Lake City were immense, and this play in the gold medal game in which he let the puck go through his legs knowing that there was a teammate to receive a pass on the other side gold medal well deserved. Mario Lemieux's legacy goes beyond the game of hockey. He's the founder of the Mario Lemieux Foundation, which supports medical research. It's his goal to have no one go through what he had to go through. And in the name of charity, he did something only Mario would think of doing. Radio show host Mark Madden had an ongoing bet with him that promised the Lemieux Foundation $6,600 if he could score it directly off of a face-off. And in 2002, in typical Mario Lemieux fashion, he scored that goal and looked up at the press box to cash in on his bet. The ongoing debate of who the greatest player in NHL history still lives to this day. What do you think? Is it Lemieux or Gretzky? Whatever the case, we should all be happy we got to witness both players in action. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video and would like to help the channel, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you soon.